Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to generate electricity from wastewater. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, wastewater treatment, if you have checked my last uh, whole uh, playlist and whole series, you must have understand it's very complex and it's very intensive. As in, uh, the only process of making bad water into safe water, not portable water, not drinking water, just safe water, basically something that you can safely discharge into rivers and ponds and not kill uh, all the aqua life there, is just very, very intensive. And uh, primary energy draw in all these plants, whatever uh, switch treatment plant you have, is generally from pumping basically you have air pumps you have water pumps and you have to understand water pumps that are in your home and doing your local thing they are not very big they don't have to be because the water there is clean but when you are talking about sludge and slurry it's like basically using a pump to pump uh, ketchup and that's when you are lucky sometimes it's like uh, uh, pushing upwards of like uh, something very thick so it takes a lot of uh, electrical mechanical power to actually do the pumping so pumping is very very serious power draw so basically they might have power draw of like let's say two megawatt almost most of them would be just pumping air pumps and uh, water pumps and overall uh, this translates into a ludicrously high running cost so this running cost becomes an issue that many small communities simply will not have a, a switch treatment because they, even if let's say some billionaire gifted them it's like okay here's the money here's the plant build it and enjoy awesome at first few days they will do it it's just the once the electrical bill will come is yeah let's just close the door let's not think about it so to make sure that that issue does not happen that you built a plant and you are not using it simply because of electrical bill we want to make electricity out of the plant so again, how the heck you can make electricity out of wastewater? You have to understand water has no energy. Uh, water has no energy because water is the uh, burnt state. Basically, if you take oxygen and hydrogen, you burn it, you are burning basically rocket fuel. But once you have burnt it, like the process is done, you get water. It's like carbon dioxide. You can't burn carbon dioxide. Same way you can't burn water now so where the power is coming from for you to extract it first source is biosolids basically human feces and uh, animal feces and all, all sort of biological things uh, all of them combine and uh, they allow a very rich biosolid material especially if you have agriculture waste and like a meat industry and all that and they dump tons of biosolids like tons and if you have a restaurant and all that they, they dump so much grease there that's like a rocket fuel flat out so that's the power source it's not water that is power source it's just the biosolids they are adding on it on top of that there is electrical chemical potential there that's coming from chemical energy that is like your soap that is like your urine if you hear people say like you can use your to create electricity it's scientifically possible it's just it's not rocket fuel it's not too powerful basically uh, think of it this way your body consumes a uh, few whatever it is like uh, alcohol uh, milk whatever it's a fuel you are consuming it the waste fuel that is like uh, basically once you have burnt it and your body has metabolized it uh, the output urine it still has some energy in it not too much not too much don't expect it like you know pee into basically your uh, rocket engine and take it to space it does not have that much power it does not even have enough power to run your car but it has there so that is also a very rich source of uh, basically electrochemical energy right there in your wastewater so these are the source of energy so how do we tap it now first the simplest the easiest way to tap it anaerobic digestion what does that mean simply you let the bio material rot without oxygen so once they rot without the oxygen they will create methane now once you have doing the rotting quote unquote all that's happening is like big uh, chunky materials are breaking down into smaller ones now this is happening on a chemical level so basically you have big things and it's being broken down to smaller things now the bacteria that does this generally gives out an output that output is methane ch4 now here's the funny thing about methane it's produced no matter what you do so you have to understand one aspect of methane that methane makes you to look like a baby throwing tantrum so if you think few billion ton of carbon dioxide is gonna harm your planet a uh, few like uh, just remove few zero of it basically uh, 20 uh, percent lower than that 20 times lower than that that is the amount of c4 you need a ch4 you need to like basically blow up the planet so you have to understand methane is ludicrously potent and it's long last co2 breaks over time but uh, methane lasts for a very long time so methane is ludicrously potent as a greenhouse gas so we have to burn it like it's much more efficient to burn it than to like just let it go so you have to use it 
so we take it and thankfully even though it's very hard to store in terms of uh, you can't just store it volumetrically efficiently it's not a liquid fuel and it's not propane or butane where you can compress it efficiently so that's why the tank that can quote unquote liquefy ch4 that's very expensive so we generally store it volumetrically basically just big a bit uh, built a very big tank as big as you can build it but it also gives you fertilizer because once you have broke down the uh, basically chem uh, microbial life have done its deed it has broken down many big complex uh, things into smaller things now those smaller things your plant can easily digest that's the whole point of a fertilizer it helps plant to digest it properly because plant can take care of itself but if it has to like you know like uh, think of it this way like your mouth spends energy to chew the food but it must be below the certain limit otherwise you won't have the enough energy to like chew the food itself really you, you take 100 watt your mouth should spend let's say 80 watts bare minute maximum but if like your mouth is consuming 120 but you simply won't have enough energy so input and output has to be maintained fertilizer helps that so the fact that uh, microbial life have already done it because they broke down the thing and now you got ch4 as a basically energy output you can directly run almost any generator into it and then you have fertilizer it's a win-win scenario then uh, many plants already tried this but it failed the reason why it failed is simply because you need a lot of space for this so biodigester you want a dedicated plant for it so somebody came up with this very ingenious idea is basically create a multi-plant to dedicated plant system so you will have let's say a, a big city like new york or delhi or mumbai they will have multiple sewage treatment sometimes hundreds of sewage treatment plant so what they will do is like their biomaterial collection department they will be like okay just collect the biomaterial don't try to filter it don't do anything extra into it just remove the water from it as much as you can do and then send the sludge to one dedicated plant so that dedicated plant is like now dedicated to do one thing and one thing well it makes it into biogas and get make it like creates a very good quality of fertilizer so it's became very uh, ubiquitous many plants are doing it and energy generation is serious like it's not like oh enough energy is just created just so you can run your plant no let's say plant energy consumption was like say five megawatt it was producing six megawatt so you can sell one megawatt so that's a uh, net profit so that also reduces your operating cost and it's simple and easy so inherently there is nothing magical about this technology it's not like you know you need some scientists to like oh, sitting there like maintaining hundreds of things it's not a nuclear reactor it's a simple thing so that's one way of converting sewage into electricity second way is microbial fuel cell uh, recently you must have heard like uh, basically bill gates have a lot of moonshot projects where it's like you know it's a big gamble if it works it's awesome if it doesn't work well you wasted the money that's why the moonshot if it works it will change the world one of them uh, some persons showed the idea of using urine as a fuel source for a generator how the heck that can happen one very simple reason i told you like your body has already metastasized the whatever you took input but the output basically the urine is still has some energy left not too much don't expect like a rocket fuel hour, but it has enough that can be converted using microbial fuel cell basically you have three primary types of fuel cell one hydrogen based fuel cell old technology we have been using it for hundreds of years then you have second type hydrocarbon fuel cell bit expensive bit tricky but we are trying to create it if you can buy it right now and it can it can be used in biodigester plant directly also because it runs on methane and uh, methane is the best fuel for it you can run it till lpg basically till propane it can use but you can't put diesel into it so you can use that and in this scenario basically there is nothing uh, mechanical happening there is no electro uh, electrical uh, Uh, physics is not acting here basically it's uh, some bacteria have the property of giving electron when they do their di digestion so using that electron we are creating a circuit that free electron is creating the circuit so it's basically like a fuel cell but the active medium is the switch and the reactant basically whatever is the acting part that it's a bio life form it's a live cell so don't understand like you can't put uv light inside this it will kill it so you have to understand it's a very uh, promising technology because it simply takes a uh, electrochemical potential basically if you are urinating in the water there is a chemical imbalance there that imbalance can be converted into electricity not too much but enough and it's simple and direct because you simply have a switch plant and you just have electrode in it nothing fancy it's simple you don't need a custom plant built for it however it is still in lab stage like of course this technology is old as in like uh, in uh, early 1900 somebody figured it out but nobody figured it out how the heck that's happening like it's happening why it's happening we did understand it and i have provided a 40 minute uh, video down below you can see it like it's a very complex thing it is it does work you can buy it in case of like a lab experiment and all that but it is not something that you know, like okay just give me this plant uh, this much uh, handling capacity it's not there but it does have a tremendous potential 
so this is also one way some plants like uh, it's not like a no plant exists in the world that uses utilizes this technology but some plant do so this is one way of using electrochemical energy, not the biomatter, electrochemical. And of course, biomatter also helps because some bacteria work in what we call a symbiotic relationship. So there is a lot. This is a very complex topic. So please watch that 50 minute video. Then we come to the fact if these are these complex, even biodigester require you to build an independent plant to get the most out of it. Why the hell bother with this thing? Well, you have to understand that money matters. At the end, money matters. Nothing else matters more than money. So how do we manage money? Yeah, I told you specified. Let's say you are a town, you are New York, and you are like, let's build sewage treatment plant. Awesome. You got the money, you did that. But the moment the running cost will come to you, you will be like surprised and shocked how much it is. Because you have to understand when you are talking about running a plant, you have multiple other things. First, you have to worry about the infrastructure basically electricity water all that okay first infrastructure you have to worry about then you have to worry about the equipment basically the equipment is not eternal it's gonna break down it's gonna have require its own maintenance so you ha must have backup equipment this is a city level equipment so you cannot have like okay just one you will have three and one of them should be enough to keep the whole system running uh, you will keep like one on another off one off on off on off on a year and third one will be just raw backup so those also add up the cost then you are talking about personnel person whatever you are uh, uh, like you know person you have to keep there and that person have to be educated it cannot be minimum wage worker the person has to know how ph works how uh, nitrogen works how all those things work it, it is a very skilled uh, demand uh, demanding job so you have to be skilled worker those are expensive on top of that once you have taken care of all this you have to worry about the electrical bill which is significant you have to understand whole united states electrical production two to three percent goes into just this wastewater uh, you know cleaning and that's a lot of electrical energy and a lot of money doing this makes it self-contained now the self-contained aspect is the interesting part. that means you can build it in a rural area and just like just have a small power delivery system there just in case like let's say power fail downs and all that you don't need a power plant okay it has to be close to your power plant it's consuming megawatts or it has to have like 11 kv line or 33 kv line or 135 kv line so it can keep running all those things in mind make it more financially viable that we can actually clean our own water so that is a very well i will say noble system and given the fact that you get fertilizer as a byproduct that's also a monetary incentive so that is why we want to do this so many old plants are now being shut down and they're being rebuilt with the biodigester or that uh, fuel cell fuel cell i have only come across like one or two but Let's, let's see how it unfolds. So this was my presentation on how to make a switch into electricity. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can press dislike. I would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.